Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Network Admin Life. Um, you probably notice these videos are pretty unpolished. There's no fancy intro or outro or uh, effects. Uh, and they're unscripted. It's just me, just some guy talking, talking about my job, uh, which is being a network admin. Um, coming to you from our wonderful pathology IDF. Um, in the old days, we used to call that an IWC, Integrated Wiring Closet. And now I think it's IDF is Intermediate Distribution Frame, something like that. Um, Google it figured out. Definitely doesn't mean Israeli Defense Force. There's, uh, no Mossad agents or anything like that in here that I know of. Um, and in, in case you don't know what an IDF is for the people that are just kind of curious about network admin stuff and aren't, you know, aren't really into it yet, um, IDF is basically, um, it'll be a closet in, an, in a building or an area of a building where you've got the main line coming from your core switch main distribution circuit, which would usually be like a, a fiber. In this case, we've got an aggregated uh, fiber link, two pairs going to this stack of switches here. It's logically all one switch. Um, the fiber will come in. This, this is a, a 20 gig aggregate connection here, 20 gigabits per second. And it comes into the switch here, and then the switch is then wired into the uh, cables that go out to where the people sit and plug their computers in. So this is where all the computers get plugged into the network. So if you ever wondered what the network looks like, here it is. This is what it looks like. Um, that's really not why I'm here today. I, I got off on a rabbit trail there. Um, what I'm here to talk about is, I uh, was recently asked a question, what a new network admin should do to um, get uh, familiar with his, his new network. Um, and I don't know, but I'll tell you what I did. Um, so let me get over here and share out this thing and click that and, oh, nice. Now I got to start all over again. Um, let's restart it. And... There's a password, hope you guys weren't looking. Okay, so the first thing I did when I got here is I got the credentials for our core switch, which is also our core router, and basically just tried to familiarize myself with what was on that switch. How was it configured? Um, what were the links coming into it, just from the switch's point of view? Um, and while I'm talking about that, I'm gonna to try to get some other software running here. Um, you won't see it, but I just need to get it started. Um, so once I get in there, uh, there's a few commands you can run. I don't know what they are in the Cisco world. I'm, I'm one of those few guys that I really don't know much about Cisco commands or Cisco networking at all. I'm literally an extreme Interesis uh, HP Procurve guy. Um, and I don't even remember the HP Procurve commands anymore, to be honest. Um, but um, what I did was, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted by dialog boxes popping up here for my software I'm loading. Um, what I did was, there's a command, the first command I used was called show neighbors. And I'm not going to show you the output of this command because it's going to give you all my internal IP addresses, and I don't want you to know that. Sorry. <laughs> I just don't want to telegraph that kind of information to the internet. But show neighbors command will come back and it'll show you the port of the switch, it'll tell you, you know, what speed it's connected at and the IP address of the neighbor, which is really handy. I get the IP address of the neighbor switch. Now I can uh, SSH into that switch. Um, hopefully not telling that. Hopefully you guys are doing SSH. If you're not, set it up. Um, SSH into that switch and do the same thing, show neighbors. And as I do that, I start building out a tree. So I've got the core switch to this switch and show neighbors. If I only see one neighbor and that's the core switch, well, there you go. I've got a core switch and I've got a, a neighbor switch. Um, and I'll do that to the next switch in the list of my show neighbors. I'll 
SSH to that and show neighbors. Oh, well, now, the, now there's another neighbor. So then I SSH to that, show neighbors. So you basically start building out a tree. That's kind of a very long-handed way of doing it, but it's, it's what I did. Um, the other thing I did was um, show IP routes. I think that's the same in the Cisco world. Just to get an idea of all the different routes we have here, I mean, there are hundreds of them, so uh, I just kind of glazed over and just, just gave them a quick once over just to see what's there. Um, the other thing I did was, uh, same in Cisco, just show run. So that'll, that'll give me the whole configuration of the switch, and since this switch is also a router, it gave me the router config as well. So I went through the router config. So the switch config showed me all the VLANs that we have in use. And it's our core switch. Every VLAN has to be there. So they're all defined on the core switch. And uh, since it's also a router, all of our the, the routes we had set up. So each each VLAN that, that has a, a layer three IP address assigned to it, and not all of them do. Some of them are just layer two VLANs. Um, but all of the layer three VLANs, I started making notes of, okay, what VLAN is this? What VLAN is this? And start making, okay, VLAN 2395 is 192.168.20.1. So um, the uh, the IP address of the VLAN in most cases is going to be the default gateway of that network. So not in all cases, but in most cases. Um, so there is another piece that I've learned is what the default gateway is and and uh, of, of all, all of our VLANs and how they're all set up. Um, Let's see, got the layer three addresses, got the layer two VLANs. Um, oh yeah, so show run. The other thing in the router config it showed me is all the static routes we had set up. Um, oddly enough, this shop does not have any routing protocol term. We don't have RIP, we don't have OSPF, we don't have BGP. Um, we are, we're probably gonna start setting that up soon, but for now we are literally a static shop because we don't change much here. So, um, aside from all of our the layer three VLANs we have, you know those 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 are going to be routes that are in our routing table. Um, but the static routes we had set up. How do we get to these these odd little places that aren't here on our campus? So we had routes set up to go to county. We had routes set up to go to the healthcare interpretive network. Um, routes set up for some um, uh, remote sites. So those are the kind of things I want to learn. So I made notes of those IPs and those gateways and SSH to those gateways and start doing my show neighbors again, what's out at those sites. Um, a lot of those sites, I couldn't do that, like a county site. I don't have control of any of our county switches, so I couldn't, couldn't get in there. Uh, healthcare interpretive network, that's another company. I obviously can't get into any of their equipment. So, but our remote sites, I could definitely, you know, SSH into the into the uh, whatever route we have set up. You know, it's going to point to a router out there, so I can SSH into that, and then again start doing show neighbors and figure out what's out there, build an entry out there. Um, so that's what I did there. I am waiting for this application to come up. There it is. Um, password here. And uh, I'm going to keep talking until it comes all the way up, which hopefully it will. I'm, <laughs> we're, uh, we're having other network issues that's causing some slowness. Run. I'm sorry, no, 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 not network issues. It's never the network. We're having some server issues that are uh, slowing things down while that's coming up. Um, so one other thing I did to kind of learn about our internal IP structure is I went to our DHCP server and just looked at all the DHCP scopes. What do we got out there that, that we're going to have a client on? So I started making notes of all those networks and kind of reconciling them against what I found in the switches. Um, and the software I'm trying to launch here, trying to show you, is uh, um, network management software. So we're an extreme shop. We use something called NetSite. Um, and it will basically, you know what, I'm going to launch the web version because it's, it's a lot faster than that. There's, you can run it, uh, run a web-based version of it, or you can run the uh, Java version. And I've been running the Java version forever, so I'm just used to it and I kind of like it. But um, 
Yeah. I'm not going to be able to run it because we're actually having problems with that server. We've, we've got an ESX server environment and uh, it's having issues right now and I cannot get to that server. So sorry, I can't show it to you. So anyway, uh, Cisco, I don't know what they use for network management. I'm sure they have it. So, but with, uh, like I said, with Extreme, we have NetSite. You can get in there and it has a list of all your switches. Um, one of the things you can run in there is a uh, topology wizard. And you can tell it, okay, here's my core router. Go into that and build my network diagram. And from that, it'll, it'll basically do what I was doing by longhand. It'll go in there and it'll It'll grab all the ports and neighbors that it sees and start building out a network map for you automatically, which is kind of nice. But what's not nice is it, it just it, it, it builds it logically and not, not in an eye-pleasing way. So it, it comes out with what I call the angry dandelions. So you'll have a switch here with a big ring of switches around it, and then one of those switches might have a ring of switches around that, and you'll just have all these overlapping, you know, looks like dandelions, literally. Um, and then you have to clean it up and all, so yeah, no, don't want to do that. Um, the other software I use, and somebody actually asked me about this as well, uh, they saw a really cool network management software I was running, um, Intermapper. So Intermapper will do the same thing. Um, let me see if Intermapper wants to run this morning, or if our ESX issues are going to affect it as well. Let's see, I'll try to launch it. Yeah, Intermapper is the same way. You can give it uh, the address of your core router and then just tell it, you know, hey, start start building me a network from there. And Intermapper is working. So let me pull up my network diagram and I'm going to make it really small so you can't read it, but I'm going to show you what it's capable of. This is, uh, it basically built my network for me and then I went in and rearranged everything to make it look nice. So just one moment while I change what I'm sharing. I'm going to stop that share and I am going to share this. It's, you'll find this far more fascinating. So that's, this is Intermapper and this is another way, you, um, this type of software, there's, there's SolarWinds, um, there's, there's all kinds of network mapping software out there. I, I just prefer Intermapper. Um, because I can draw a picture of it and monitor it at the same time. So when, when I need to generate a network diagram, I can just print this page out and say, there it is. This page is also how I monitor my network. Um, this is kind of getting off into the weeds a little bit, but it's, it's addressing a question that was asked. So in, I can go into each one of these switches and tell it the type of probe it's going to use. These are all SNMP v3 probes. It basically grab the base uh, basic network OID, so it'll grab you know all the interfaces and it'll start grabbing statistics off all those interfaces, and you can create maps and charts and all that kind of things, do network graphing and uh, bandwidth and all all that good stuff. Um, if a switch goes down, it'll it'll send me an email. Or it can send you a text if you have a server set up for that. And uh, yeah, so this is, you're basically seeing my whole network there. Um, and you can see, um, we, we basically had two angry dandelions. We have, a, uh, we have a core switch, which is this, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but it's the one on the top here. And then we have a, a big distribution switch down here. They're, those were basically two nodes of the angry dandelions until I cleaned this all up. I kind of moved everything around where, where I wanted it and where it made sense. So uh, yeah, um, Intermapper is a really cool product. It was originally built on Macintosh, so if you're a PC or a Linux guy, it might take you a while to get used to how they do things. Um, yeah, but I but I like it because it you know just I'm a visual guy. I like to, to see how things are set up. Um, and like I said, you can um, here we'll look at here's a sample chart. I don't know if that's showing up or not, but. Um, you can pull these charts up and take a look at your utilization on various ports or speed or whatever it is you want to know. So yeah, pretty pretty cool product. But it's another way you can you can get to know your network is through any type of, of network uh, monitoring product. You can generally give them a uh, 
a seed router that it'll start from, and it'll start pulling in all the neighbors from that and uh, just building up the network map for you. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I did to get to know my network. Well, yeah, I got up and walked around too. Um, sorry, let me uh, let me come back to you. There we go. Um, yeah, so I just got out of my chair and walked around. Got a list of all the wiring closets, all the IDFs, uh, the, the MDF, which is our big distribution center down in the basement, where we have a lot of network lines in there. Um, it's also where our external internet and external WAN from the county come into to our campus. It's down in the main hospital basement. Um, so I went around and just looked, checked out all the network closets. What do they look like? What condition are they in? Is there anything I need to do? This closet, for instance, all the switches were mounted at the bottom and we had cable management in between all these patch panels. And uh, the, the cable management wasn't even used. So the cables went into the ports and they were draped down in front and they plugged into the switches which were down there. Um, they were all the switches were just mounted in a stack down there and the cables, it was just like a big waterfall of cables here. I'm sure you've seen that. If you've been in this job for a while, you've seen it maybe even contributed to it. Um, but yeah, this is, this is one of the first closets I cleaned up. So that's one of the things I needed to know is what needed to be cleaned up. You know, what, what physical measures needed to be taken on the network. Um, yeah, so that's, that's all I can think of. If you have any uh, questions about, you know, what to do on your new job or anything like that, just put them in the, in the comments down below and I'll, uh, Try not to ignore them for too long. Um, I'm sorry, there's some comments that I saw that I hadn't answered. Um, I do try to answer all the comments. So, um, yeah. I look at that, my uh, network software is trying to start up now, finally. <laughs> oh, well, maybe next time. So anyway, you guys, I hope you have a great week. Um, just keep out there, keep at it, keep studying, and uh, you never, you'll, you'll, you'll make it someday. Anyway, have a great week. We'll catch you guys next time.